hello students so welcome back to the second part of the week 4 lecture in this lecture we will be talking about the multiple activities in tense and uh, we will also talk about user input validation and then of course the even driven programming that will continue <coughs> so as you know that the main activity it contains two files one is the xml that is the gui layout and the other one is the java code file and it is eventually a child class of the activity so maybe one particular specific class has multiple activities for example we're talking about a youtube uh, application or some other game gmail application one application have multiple activities so this is the activity life cycle so when you start that particular specific activity first of all it will actually start the method on create which has been defined in that particular specific activity class and then we have the life cycle math method will be called after after the on create once all these instances of different GUI component has been created inside the RAM it will execute the on start method and then after that on restore instance state and then it will call the method on resume again on save instance state and on pause and then it will we can go between these two uh, remember that if we have some specific dialog box which is co coming up right in front of that particular specific activity and that activity is still visible in the background okay so it this is the circle that is going on on resume on pause and then once it get back the focus on the other uh, the activity then it will again call the on resume method and it will be visible to the user but once it is completely invisible to the user it will call on this on stop method on restart method and on start okay and then again uh, when on start method it become visible to the user and then uh, on resume method and then it's visible to the user user inter interact with it and once that particular specific activity is no longer required or no longer used or maybe due to some uh, limited memory the system the android system may want to destroy that one then it will call the on destroy method it is more like a destructor of the class and the activity is no longer available inside our uh, memory so we have seen um, uh, that on create method that must be implemented executed when the system create the instance of activity and only execute when creating the instance so it is not going to be like if the one time once we have created the instance it's that particular activity instance still inside our memory that method is not going to be executed again okay only the on start on stop on resume on pause method will be executed depending on the life cycle of that particular specific activity but on create method will be executed only once during the life cycle of that particular specific activity unless and until it is destroyed or on destroy method has been called and then again if you want to create that activity then again next time the on create method will be executed but only when the activity object is no longer present in the memory it has been destroyed by the system or by the user so that is the place where we create all the instances of different gui components layout button text view and so on so the on start method is when we just exit i mean right after the on create method we are calling the on start method so activity enters into the start state and becomes visible to the user so actually this is the point this is the place where the Vis, uh, the visibility of that particular specific act GUI component is made available to the user and the user can see and interact with that particular specific so execute it every time activity becomes visible to the user 
how for example we have this particular specific activity which is open you click on some video and it start playing that particular specific video now the previous activity is no longer visible to you okay so when we come back from that new activity to back to the previous one then again this on start method will be executed okay so that is the on start method on pause method on pause method mean that for example you have a, a system uh, what do you can say that uh, you have a system dialog box which appear in front of that particular specific activity the activity is still visible in the background if we look at here the activity is still visible in the background but the system has shown a specific uh, dialog box in front of that particular specific activity in that case it will call first the on resume method and once it will come back on sorry on pause method i mean when it is visible this particular specific dialog box in front of the activity it will call that particular specific on pause method and once you are going back for example i press a cancel button or try to select some option and this particular specific dialog box disappear then it will call the on resume method and that is to, uh, what you can say that the same thing whenever that particular specific dialog box go away and the our uh, activity in the background becomes in the focus comes back into the focus and we can interact with that particular specific activity it will call that particular on resume method <coughs> on stop method again we are at that particular specific activity we click on some specific video and when we click on that particular video it will start another activity to play that particular video so the on the previous activity it will actually call the on stop method so it will stop that activity okay that activity still exists and then over ram it is present in the system but not visible to the user so then we will call it its own stop method and then once we come back again we will be other activity will having that particular on stop method and we will be having the on start method and on resume method for this previous activity and it will be show up to us again on restart on restart mean that we are like restarting that particular specific activity huh? this particular go back into the background it's on stop method of the previous activity has been called when we go back to the previous activity it will call on restart method on resume method and then eventually it will uh, uh, what you can say that that particular specific on start math on restart on start and on resume method will be called in says this way it will become visible to the user again so let me show you the um, exact life cycle right now there is no activity so we start the activity one once we start the activity one it will create start the by default will start the on create method it will create the instance of that particular specific activity call the on start method on resume method and show that particular specific activity to the user now the user can interact user click on some specific video to start that or see that particular video or to play that particular specific video then what will happen on this first activity the first activity it will call the on pause and on stop method once it is called it this particular specific activity which still exists in our system it will be put into the activity stack on the second activity where the user want to play the video it will first call the on create method then it will create it will uh, it will uh, execute the on start method then on resume method and then this activity is being visible to user user can see the video and once the user finish the video it want to come back the previous activity number one then what will happen again it will call the on pause and on stop method this particular specific activity one will be popped will be bring out from the activity stack on the other hand the activity will do go into the stack and then it will execute the on star on restart on start and on resume methods of the activity one and show that particular activity to the user the same thing again if you want to stop that one on pause and on stop 
and then this activity activity 2 will be popped or bring out from this activity stack activity 1 will go back into the activity 1 uh, activity stack and then again on restart on start and on resume method will be called on the activity 2 so this is how that transition is happening between two different activities and they are going into the activity stack i hope that thing is clear to you so now the point is how we can add multiple activities inside our system maybe some of you have already experienced that thing but the quite simple uh, if we look at our previous example that we have that game activity and you want to add a new activity so you can simply go to the file menu in the file menu you can have a new in the new you have the activity in the activity you can select which specific template right now it's sticking to that particular empty activity the other way that how we can add on this project uh, side project bar, uh, part where it shows us the project files we can right click on the project name and then we can say new then we can say activity and then we can say that the empty activity selection we click on this one so it will bring out that particular specific dialog box so here you can select the name of the activity class once you select the name of activity class it will automatically change that layout name and then you click finish it will actually create those java file as well as the xml layout file okay so we have added a one new activity inside our java project or the app android project now what we want remember that this is the thing we have uh, we have implemented the long press on the title bar uh, title but title text we also have a press on the press event of the button and then we didn't have any press event on this one so what we want when we press on that particular specific button we want to start that particular specific other activity the game activity that we have just created okay so how we can do that again very simple uh, go into the xml uh, layout file and select that particular specific button and add that particular on click activity on click uh, property for that particular let us play button so once you have done then you need to create that particular specific method how you can that do that you can you know that i mean when you provide that on click property then the name of the method that name of the method will be red underlined you bring your cursor anywhere in that particular name of the method press alt enter and it will ask you to create a method inside the main activity class so it will automatically create that method so once you have created that method then you can you can write these two lines in that particular specific method so what we are doing here we are saying that intent that is in intent creating a, a class inside the android api we are creating the name of the variable and then we are saying the new intent we are providing the context and the activity that we want to start so we want to start the game activity dot class so it's a class type okay so we are starting that particular we want to start that activity and then once we have created that particular intent object or the instance then we are saying start activity using this particular specific intent but the point is what is an intent that is a question okay so intent is a communication object inside the android it's a way of for act invoking one activity from another we can also put some because this is a class this is an object we can put some extra information inside that object and we can pass from one activity to the other it is not only that particular intent object is not only used to start an activity we can also ask for example i give you the example uh, if i want to communicate with you what i need to do maybe i speak this is the one way to do the communication but i would say that i want to make it some i write a note on the paper of the uh, paper and then enclose that paper information whatever i want to communicate with you i enclose the information inside the envelope 
and on the envelope i write down this particular specific envelope or this particular specific letter is for whom this is from the student one student two student x student y so i can tell so whom is the target of that so that envelope is actually a communication object that we are going to use to communicate it between two different people so intent is also an object to communicate between different components within the android system okay it can be a communication between the activity and the service it can be a communication between the activity and the android system itself it can be communicating communication between the service and the broadcast receiver activity or the broadcast receiver content providers and the service so all four different components that for high we have discussed earlier the intent is the communication object which will help them to communication communicate with each other or with the android system so intent is a communication object that can be used to communicate between different components of an android application here we are using only for one purpose to start an activity from an activity start another activity okay so that's what we are using but that's only one use of this one we can use for other purposes as well because that can be used to communicate with so we can in that object we can put some more information like i have put that uh, what you can say that a letter inside that envelope maybe i also want to put another directions or some other information maybe some like for example i want to have a note that is the information that i want to pass but i also put another uh, usb stick inside that envelope and give it so i'm passing that particular additional information inside that envelope so in similarly we can also add some other extra information inside the intent object and that will be passed to the other activity through that particular communication object okay similarly um, when we can we can also start another activity for uh, we can also like use the intent to receive back some information for example i ask you that you need to do something and in return you need to give me back the answers for example i have given you an assessment or sdlt and self-directed learning task and then you need to submit your work back to me in via the uh, <coughs> moodle where you submit your project so again i have given you some instructions i have given you some information inside that envelope or maybe the email and then i am expecting some response from you so that is also possible and that information which is coming back to the first activity which has started the second activity they also come as an intent as object of the communication back to the first activity so that is also possible that we can start another activity with some response that we are ex the first activity is expecting from the second activity uh, but we will be discussing it in more detail when we will talk about the start an activity for results now right now we want to keep it simple we want to start another activity and pass some information with that particular intent object so what we want to do in the main activity we want to start the game activity so how it will be started in the main activity we create an intent object just write we have intent is equal to new intent passing the para, uh, the context that is this and then the name of the activity that we want to start so we create that particular specific intent object and then we are passing this particular specific intent object to the android system using that start activity and passing that intent object so we are asking the android system to start an activity based on that particular specific intent or the communication object that we have created so what it will do android system will do android system will open that look at into that particular specific intent object okay you want to start an activity and which activity you want to start you have mentioned it 
game activity dot class okay so what it will do it will ask that it will ask that other activity to start and it will also pass that particular specific intent object which we have created inside the main activity given to the android system it will create that particular game activity and it will also pass that particular intent object which are given by the main activity to the android system it will pass that intent object to the game activity as well so remember so main activity create the object give it to the android system android system based on the information inside the communication object start the game activity but it also pass that particular intent object that is given by the main activity to the game activity okay so that's what happened similarly for example in the game activity we want to start another activity in another application okay we either have another application and here it create an intent object give it to the android system now looking at the intent object uh, Android system know that this particular game activity want to start another activity from another application so it will create that particular specific main activity and pass that particular specific intent object to the other activity and this is how things are being intent objects are being used to start another activity so if we look at in the Android system we have two types of intents one is the explicit intents and the other one is the implicit intent when we specifying a specific component which specific class that we want to create activity or the service or the broadcast we exactly know that what is the name of that particular specific component then we are saying that it is an explicit activity explicit intent okay and but sometime we don't know okay so first let me give you the example of the explicit one here we are saying that intent new intent passing the context that is this and then the game activity dot class so this is an explicit intent why because we are exactly telling that you need to start the game activity and then we start that particular specific intent using the start activity method explicitly identifying which specific object we want to create and which specific thing we want to start but sometime we don't know for example you have using your image application hmm, where you have all those photos and videos and gallery application and inside the gallery application you click on some uh, video or the image and then you say I want to share so when you say I want to share you are not specifying that how you want to share then what will happen so when you say I want to share something okay it will pass that particular specific intent this is also an intent that I want to share a image but I don't know how to do that so you pass that particular specific intent sharing an image to the android system in the android system because all different type of applications has been registered in the android system he know that which specific set of applications can help you to complete that specific share image task so it will say that you can share that particular it will give you a list of applications which can help you to share that app, that particular specific image maybe you want to share it with messenger you want to share it with facebook you want to share it with the whatsapp or you want to share it via an email or yahoo mail or gmail or something so it will show you a list of possible applications which can help you to complete that specific task which you are not identify exactly who is going to do that particular specific task for you and you don't know so this is an implicit intent and of course then you say that i want to use the gmail to share that particular specific you select that option and then it will <coughs> open the compose that compose email uh, activity for the gmail and it will also attach that particular specific image with it but this is how when we, when we are not sure what we want to do exactly and who is going to do that then we pass on that particular specific intent 
to the Android system and Android system give you the possible options which can help you to complete that action and then you can select on your own and then accordingly it will start that particular specific activity so that particular specific intent is an implicit imp impact instead of specifying which specific object which specific activity you want to start you say that i want to perform that action but i don't know who can do that and then the android system will give you the possible options so this is <coughs> the implicit activity Impl imp sorry implicit intent okay so now what happened so we say that we want to start an explicit intent we create that particular specific explicit intent and start that particular specific game activity okay when you click on it because we have not defined anything in the game activity so that's why you don't see anything right now here so first thing is we need to start with the GUI component so what we want we have a constraint layout we add a text view and inside a text view we have assigned the id and then we want to show that particular specific name over there that text welcome to number game of us okay and then we also have a view which show that particular specific blue line underline this one now what we want to do as i told you that inside the intent object we can put some extra information so first of all let me explain what i am doing here first of all i am using that particular specific global variable for this added text that is the input field from the user where the user can enter his his or her name okay so we are declaring a, inside the main activity java main activity class we are declaring a global variable and in the own create method after that set content view uh, line we are assigning that particular variable to the added text name input based on the id that we have assigned to this particular specific use uh, edit text edit input uh, or the user input uh, field so once we have ass assigned that one in the let us play button button play clicked okay so what we are doing we are creating a string variable username and then we say that from that particular edit text dot get text whatever is has been entered in this particular specific uh, input field we are getting that text and when we get that text it will give me a sequence of bytes and or array of bytes you can say that array of characters you can say that okay so we want converting that array of characters array of bytes actually into a string so that will become a string and that string we are saving in the username and now in the next line we are saying that we want to put an extra information inside the communication object that is intent so intent that is the variable name dot put extra information and this extra information should be a key value pair you need to provide a key that should be unique that is the name of the information that you want to save in that particular specific intent object and the value itself so this is a key and this is the value so key value pair will be saved inside the intent object and then we say start activity and remember that what happened this intent object is passed to the android system android system ask the game activity to start it will start that activity and this intent object that we have created in the main activity will be passed to the game activity okay so on the one side on the first activity that is our main activity we have added some extra information inside the intent object okay now on the other side that is the game activity we need to get that intent object and unpack this information that the username information from the intent object and then we can show it on the screen how we can do that so this is what when we set content view it will create that particular specific text view 
and it will create that particular view and show this is the default message welcome to the number gamer bus but that we don't want to show we want to show welcome to the number game and the name of the user which has been provided to us in this particular specific input field okay so how we can access that particular intent object which is present which has been passed to the game activity from the android system simple the first line intent we are creating the intent variable and we are saying this dot intent this game activity get intent will bring out or what you can say that give us the access to the intent object which has been passed to this game activity from the main activity via the android system so this will give us the access to that particular intent object and from that intent object we are say get string extra string extra information and the, you remember this key value username it should be exactly the same that we have put it here the user underscore name with all the capital and the small or underscore and everything that should be exactly the same how we put that particular key that the key should be exactly the same when we are trying to retrieve the name username information so intent dot get string extra username it will return us back a string value okay so if it return a string value then we can simply take that username value that is coming from our main activity and then here again for this particular text view we have assigned the id so we are saying that text view that's a variable name and then connecting that particular very text view variable with the actual variable actual text view that is present inside our memory and then we say that text view variable dot set text we are setting the text information here so we say that welcome to the number game and then we are saying that we are adding the username which is coming from our main activity okay so in this way we can extract the information get uh, the access to the intent object we are getting the access to the intent object reading the extra information which are present in the intent object and then we are trying to show them on the user interface and this is how we can work so for example if i have given the name alice in the input field and then click on that particular lattice display button it will show me welcome to the number game alice there's another scenario for example i didn't put any information no input inside the input field that added text no nothing is there and then i click on the let us play button what will happen of course there is nothing so what will happen that's an empty string that will go to the game activity and here welcome to the number game but there is without any name do you think it's a good thing i don't think so that we should have that particular specific name here whether you are putting xyz or abc but doesn't matter but that name should be there so how we handle this kind of situation for that we need to have a user input validation we need to validate the user must provide us some info name if we want to play the game okay so how we can implement that thing very simple mm -hmm. we have accessed from that particular input field that is an added text we are getting the text and two string and we are saving that inside our string variable so in that string variable we simply check if that string variable is is empty we don't create the intent and we don't start the activity okay but if that particular specific intent object uh, string object is not empty then we will be starting the game activity otherwise not so in this situation what will happen if we don't provide any info information if we don't get the input to the input field and press this button then what will happen it will say the username is required okay but if we have provided the information provided the name of the user and then press this button then it will go to the next activity and show us that particular specific name so in this way we can start a new activity 
and pass some information and in the target activity we can retrieve those information and show them or interact and use those information in the new activity so definitely we will be completing this number game in the practical session of this class that is i will upload the video for that one as well okay so now one more thing that i want to discuss here is the menu we want to add a menu on the top side we have a menu so first of all we need to have add a resource directory menu resource directory so there are again two different ways to do that first one is simple go to the file menu new and then you say i want to add, add an android resource directory the second way is the other one you right click on that particular resource uh, right click on that particular resource directory or the application you said new and then you have an android resource directory when you click on that it will open up that particular specific menu so what i said from that drop down menu you select a menu automatically it will show you a menu here okay menu menu but maybe you don't want to do anything else so just select this menu automatically it will brings up the menu name and you click on the okay when you click on the okay you can see that we have this particular specific menu resource directory has been added under under the resource directory of that one we have a drawable resource directory we have a layout resource directory this menu resource directory has been added after this whole procedure okay so inside that particular resource directory we right click on the resource directory click on the new and it say that i want to add a resource menu file a menu resource file when you click on that actually it will add ask you the name so you can provide the name i mean again remember that whenever putting adding the resources we cannot provide the capital letters okay so we always have to provide the small letters so we say that main underscore menu this is the main menu of your application and you can simply click on okay when you click on okay so it will add that particular specific main underscore menu dot xml file if you open that particular specific xml file it ha in the beginning it has nothing only that menu uh, tag is there starting tag and ending tag now we can start working on that this particular menu actually representing that particular specific menu bar and then we can add an item inside it inside the item we are providing the name id of that particular specific item uh, we are providing the title this particular specific title property is compulsory you have to provide it is a compulsory a property that you need to be provided if you don't provide it it will show you a red lines and may not compile it is just like uh, if you are having the uh, views like buttons or the image or the text views you have to provide the length and width property so similarly here the title property is the compulsory property that you need to provide icon we are trying to add the icon i will show you how in the uh, <coughs> how we can add these these uh, icons in the practical session but we can add the icons in the drawable and now we are select added that particular i have added that particular specific icon and it is showing up on here and do you want to show that particular icon show as i can always mean that it is always be visible provided that we have a room to show that particular specific icon okay again i add another activity another item again uh, i provide the id to that particular icon uh, title that is a compulsory property icon and the how we want to show that particular specific icon and then the third one i have provided the title and icon but i didn't mention anything so if they didn't if there is no room it automatically show you these three dots if you click on dots it will show you that particular title and if you click on that you can perform some action on it okay so once we have created that particular specific resource file 
and if we start executing our project it is not going to show our menu to us because that resource file is not sufficient to show that particular specific menu so for that we need two methods the first one is on create options menu and it takes a menu as an input we need to override these two methods the first one is on create options if you have implemented that particular on create options menu correctly it will start showing you that particular specific menu in the menu bar and this the second method public boolean on options item selected here you are going to implement the what you want to perform when the user select specific click on or tap on some specific menu icon or select some specific menu uh, item then what you want to perform what you want to do in response of that particular specific interaction and that is being implemented in this particular method and so uh, this method will create the option menu and this will help you to implement the interaction on those menu items the first thing is first that is how to create how to show that particular specific uh, menu bar and the menu icons and so on on the screen or in our application so very simple so first of all we are saying that new menu inflator we want to create a new menu inflator okay this so we create a menu inflator inflator is more like it take a resource file that is the main menu resource file it take that particular source file and create all those objects inside the memory and and uh, what you can say that creating all those things of like different items different icons and so on create all those things from the resource file and then assigning uh, so that is the inflator layout inflator which is inflating all those things which is creating all those different components of the layout so here we see that menu inflator which is creating all different components of the menu and then we say that return on create options menu menu that particular specific menu we are providing it to the super class whatever that super class is compact activity so it will automatically that compact activity will decide that how it is going to show that particular specific menu in our application so in writing this particular specific two lines it is going to create or show our menu and it will behave but of course if we click on if without implementing the second method if we click on those uh, home buttons or the plus button or the info uh, menu option it will not do anything because we have not implemented that part if you want to do that then you have to like uh, need to implement that on options item selected and the other thing is that that is coming as an input to this method is the item on which item you have clicked you have clicked on the home you have clicked on the plus or add user or you have clicked on the info okay so based on that particular item what we, from that item we are getting the id remember that when we uh, we selected that particular specific we provide the ids item id home menu home menu button menu add and menu info so we provide the ids to each and every menu item so the item is coming as an input from the item we are getting its id and you know what is a switch so we are switch we are adding uh, implementing a switch on that particular specific id and then we have r.id.menu home and then we now we know that the menu if that is the case it means that we have clicked on the home button so we are just showing a toast that home home menu is being clicked so we are show toasting as a home menu add menu or info menu so based on the menu id we are identifying which specific um, menu item has been clicked and accordingly we can perform right now we are not doing very much but definitely uh, maybe for example at this particular home button we want to go back instead of showing the number game we want to show go back to the main activity yeah that is also possible we can just simply uh, close that particular specific activity finish activity and then we can go back 
okay so uh, maybe uh, in the practical session we will be implementing that one so in this way it will be much more sense that what we are doing but right now we are just showing you the toast messages okay so the next uh, week we will be talking about of course we will continue to user interaction then we will talk about the card view we also talk about the list view and the recycler view so the are uh, the three different views which will help us to uh, develop more activities and of course the interaction is going on that will be continued throughout our session throughout our course now okay so here are some resource references for this particular specific lecture i hope you have enjoyed have a good day bye